there we go. And there he is, right? Look at that. Looks like uh, so we have depth. This is a 2D game, but they were adding some like 3D feeling to it. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and this is part two in creating a memory match game like you've seen in Mario Party for the Nintendo 64. Now do check out part one as we set up this character and got him to move, and we explained what the memory match game is. It's like the memory game with cards, except a bit more fun with uh, some more uh, interactive elements. We're gonna move a character around and then pick uh, one of nine uh, boxes to select, and when we select that box, it's gonna show us what is inside. So in this part, we're gonna set up our boxes. So we have a grid, a three by three grid of nine boxes, and now eight of those are gonna be pair, or four of those will be pairs, and one will be a whammy, or like a negative thing you pick. If you select it, you will lose some time, or you'll stop being able to move for some amount of time. So now let's add a box, right? So let's just very simply, so we're gonna do physics dot add, call it a sprite. Could also just be an image actually. So we're gonna put it at, let's say width times a quarter, and then we're gonna be down at 150 from the height, and it's going to use the Sokoban sprite sheet that we have, this guy over here that our character animations are in, but also all the rest of this stuff. Now we're gonna use basically these boxes. Or yeah, these boxes. Sokoban is a push box game, so we'll just call these boxes. So this row is 13 items long, so which means this is index 12, 11, 10. So let's use the silver one. So we're gonna use frame 10. Let's just see it. And the, there it is. So this is our box. Now let's actually see. Let's just turn let's just turn on the debug for arcade physics. I like to do that just so that I can see uh, what the hitbox of things look like. So there it is. Okay. Cool. Okay, good. Now we will, these boxes only need to be static. But now that we've seen that we've shown it, we're gonna make a group to make these boxes. We'll be making uh, nine of them. And it'll just be easier to add collisions with the player uh, if we're using a group. So let's make a group. Up here, we're gonna make a, let's call this box group. A class property. Do refer to part one if you're unclear what the class property is. It's a modern JavaScript feature. Um, that the phaser three parcel template uh, lets you use by default. It has the libraries you need to install. Dot phaser dot physics dot arcade dot static static group. It's gonna be a static group so that it makes static sprites or static bodies. So this dot box group, this dot physics dot add dot static group. Okay, good. We can delete this. Well, let's just say this dot box dot this dot box group dot get. Right. This should be about the same. Is that true? Yep. So nothing should change, other than yeah. Now we have a blue box around our a, a blue bounty box around our box image here. So that's good. So now we need uh, eight more of these. So let's make a method here to create boxes. Let's say, why not? Uh, so we know it's gonna be a three by three grid, but let's see, let's see. So we know we're gonna have to put things into the box. Let's just make the, let's just make this, let's see, row, uh, row less than three plus plus row. And then this is column, call less than three since it's three by three, plus plus, plus plus call. Okay, and so for each one of these, we're gonna do this dot box group dot get. So now the X and Y, so let's say, uh, let, so we know Y, Y is going to be just so that they're separated here about 100, 
start at 150 and then add 150 each time. So what's going to be a little bit different here is x. We're going to use percentage like we did here, as you can see, width times uh, quarter. So we're going to call this x per uh, 0 0.25. And then we want the width. So const width this.scale.width. And so what we want here is width times x per, right? So that'll give us uh, the quarter. And then y, and then the same Sokoban frame and the uh, texture in the 10th frame. And then for each column, we're going to x per plus equals 0 0.25, another quarter percent. And then after the columns have been made, we're going to put x percentage back to one quarter, and then y is going to add 150. And so this dot create boxes should put the boxes on the game screen. Great. Now uh, our dude is actually here, just behind the box. So let's put our dude at point six so sixty percent down from the top of the screen so that's better you see they are colliding we did not have not added a collider yet so nothing's happening but he is a bit too big so let's just make our player collision box smaller since it doesn't need to be this big and the way the perspective is you're gonna want him to to um, like be able to walk behind like right here right so that looks about right but the collision box will block you from doing that. So we're gonna change the collision box for both items right now so that we can do that. So we're gonna do use some depth sorting too. If you do need to know about depth sorting, we do recommend if you go to the YouTube Arcade channel, Arcade HQ, we have a bunch of algorithms videos and one of them looks at selection sort. Let's go to playlists here. Algorithms in JavaScript playlist. We have a insertion sort for 2D depth sorting. That's the video you're gonna to wanna to check out if you want a description of, of depth sorting. But we're gonna do it real quick here. Okay, so let's make our player's collision box here. So we're gonna do set size. Here's a rectangle, so set size. So we're gonna want, so we know he's 64 by 64. Let's say just 40 on the width and then let's say 16 on the uh, height. What does that look like? That is that is small, that may be okay. But now we're gonna set the offset. And the offset, so let's see, he's 64 uh, minus 40, that's 14, so maybe 12. And then, um, so I just did that math by 24 plus 40 is 64, divide 24 and a half is 12, so you get the box basically to this edge. Now 16, 64, right, that had 16, 64, um, 16 times four. So we are gonna want, let's say 32, right? No, maybe, I don't know, math. Let's see what that looks like. It's not, it's, I mean, it's 48, yeah. And so let's see, let's just get this box basically below, no, too below, not 48, 36, right? Okay. We can, we can keep adjusting these numbers, but that's probably not bad. i just write 38. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so now we have this much smaller hitbox. So then when he's when our character is here, let's say, and it's colliding with the, the front of the box, it will be over it so that it looks like there's like a depth for these items. So now for each box, we're going to do the same thing dot set size, and the box is probably 64, right? I think so, there's no padding or anything, so the width will be 64. And then let's just say it's 32 height, and then set offset. Ah, so there's no um, IntelliSense here, because it's giving us a any. We know it's not an any, so let's do this. Um, this is how I usually like to do it so that I can get type information. We know we're getting a physics sprite. So phaser.physics.arcade.sprite, and then we can do, oops, box. Dot set offset, so no offset on the X, 
then 32 offset on the Y. Let's see what happens. Okay, now they're about half. So maybe that's too much, right? If you can walk over here, does that look right? That may look okay. Let's say that's okay. Okay, so now we have the boxes there. Let's add the collider. This dot physics dot add dot collider. So we're gonna collide between the player and the box group. Okay, so we can't move past it. Okay. That's good. You can always adjust these box sizes to your like in, in your game. Okay, now we should do some depth sorting here. What are we at on time? 10 minutes. So let's do a depth sort. So Phaser will actually do the depth sort for you if you use the set depth uh, method on each sprite. Uh, Phaser will then sort them by their depth that you give them, as long as they're on the same parent. So all of our um, game objects currently are on the scene. There's no containers, not inside containers, any of that right now. And so just giving them that number, you will see it sorted correctly. So now we're gonna sort it by their Y value. And by doing that, we should get it pretty close to being right. So let's put a, here's the update. This is the bottom of the update. We are going to, let's see, look at all our children. Let's say that, how about that? So this not children, dot each, and then for each child. So now, let's see, child is a game object but really it's a arcade sprite. So we need to see, we do this uh, similar trick that we just did before, and we're gonna type this as what we know it to be, phaser.physics.arcade.sprite. Now you will probably still get an error if you're using a visual VS code, visual studio code. Um, that, uh, let's see. Game object is missing the following property. This is a TS for TypeScript. Um, VS Code is doing that. So we actually just, we don't care. Uh, so we do TS ignore to ignore all the TypeScript errors. Now the one valid error is from ESLint. Uh, and we'll end this uh, child's declare but not use. So no one used var. So we will use it, so that doesn't matter. So child.setDepth, the set depth, nope, not debug, depth. And we're going to use the child's y position. All right, good. Now, you don't necessarily have to do it in the update. You can do it only every time um, the player moves, is because no one else is moving, only the player is moving. So, naturally, no one else's depth is being changed. You can do the depth, set the depth one time, and then uh, call this again each time the player moves or make like a dirty flag or anything like that. Keep it simple, we're just gonna do it each, every update. There we go. And there he is, right? Look at that, it looks like, uh, looks like we have depth. This is a 2D game, but they were adding some like 3D feeling to it by having some depth like this, like he's walking around the boxes as if we're in a more 3D-ish space than a 2D-ish space. So good, so now we have our player, we have the boxes. So next up, what we're gonna do is know that when we're near a box, touching the box, basically, it'll be uh, allow us to select it by hitting the space bar. So we're gonna do that in part three.